This video is an attempt at trying to share a message about my progress so far. However, for those of you who enjoy my ludicrous, ridiculous fitness challenges, then I have a good one at the end of this video as compensation for sticking around listening to me waffle on. I need to give my legs a break and my backside. This is mental. What a challenge. This is great endurance training. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yes! 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 I recently made a video about the value of overcoming a really hard challenge. It's just a sheer drop. This video was half created as my channel trailer, but most importantly, as my origin story. It was a benchmark in my fitness journey where I realized I'd actually achieved something. When I see benchmarks like this, the Yorkshire Three Peaks being smashed, for example, I know that the hard work and determination I've had over the last three or four years has been great. That's real progress. I recently surpassed my first benchmark of 1,000 subscribers and I wanted an updated message for those new viewers because who wants to watch old videos, right? Those old videos I've made do tell my story, but I wanted something that was a bit punchy. I'm not a Zwifting YouTuber. I'm not a running YouTuber. I'm not a fitness influencer. And not every challenge I do is a mountainous run, a 100K slog, or a slow climb up a pixelated snow-capped mountain on a bike. I used to be a fat bloke, now I'm a slightly less fat bloke who tries to run and Zwift and films that effort for YouTube as he continues to hit his forever increasing targets and I make videos about that forever relentless forward progress. That's what I do, that's, that's me in a nutshell. My channel trailer video was my attempt at trying to explain this and part of that was something that I value above losing weight, Zwifting and running and that is overcoming a really really hard challenge. Two weeks ago, I actually wrote a script for a video. I filmed it, I edited it, and then I didn't upload it because it felt like I was ranting about a non-issue that a week or two later now wouldn't be an issue anymore. I was also in a really bad mood when I wrote and filmed it. Okay, one. Okay, good. I am having an absolute nightmare this week. If you're looking for a fun and entertaining Zwift or running video in this week's video, then maybe skip this one. I was in a really bad mood. If you're a running expert, physiotherapist, keyboard warrior, or a combination of all three, then also maybe skip this one. Life is too short to spend time giving advice to someone who doesn't know what he's doing and or doesn't care, because what he is doing is a damn sight more than what he used to do. Originally, my plan for this week's video was a short Zwift video, which I know will be disappointing for some of you because I know you'd rather watch my Zwift videos than listen to me ramble on. However, I wanted to document what's happened to me this week because it's an integral part of the fitness and weight loss journey that I'm on. It happens to everyone. This is a picture of me and A&E on Saturday just gone. Today is Wednesday and I'm still occasionally using these crutches to stand up. Weeks like these happen in every fitness and weight loss journey, but that doesn't stop it being really frustrating. For the last few days, my training plan that I explained in detail in my new training weight loss strategy video two weeks ago has been completely derailed. All I've done for the last few days is sit on the sofa complaining to anyone that will listen, which is no one now, my kids did say that they are grateful that we have two TVs in the house. Wow, you must be rich. Oh honey, he's teasing you. Nobody has two television sets. On Sunday, just gone, so a few days ago, I was supposed to run the official Royal Parks half marathon event. It's not a particularly hard event. It's only a half marathon distance, a distance I ran regularly in my prep for my 100K run a few weeks ago. So not an event I was particularly scared of, but an event I was really looking forward to as I would have been able to set myself a new official half marathon PB. I don't have any official PB numbers. I have numbers that I run because I run them in the local footpaths and streets around my home, but they're not official because they're not on an official race or route. Daddy, daddy cool, daddy, daddy cool. What is it, three hours, four hours? total moving time. I've just had to stop to walk briefly because I feel 
like I'm going to pass out. First day of sunshine for about a week. You see, even though I do a lot of running, I don't enter into many official races or events, partly because of time and partly because I like to make up quirky events, like running 100 miles in seven days. That'll do for today. Recently, I set myself a new 5K PB challenge, run a park run in under 30 minutes. I've got a video on this attempt and my training coming very soon. I already have my 10K PB time of one hour and four minutes from earlier in the year where I ran the Colchester Stampede with my partner, Tracy. Um, and then that's it, my first official 10K race. I did it in exactly one hour four minutes and 43 seconds. I want to run an official marathon race and set a new respectable PB that is reflective of my current fitness levels. Then once I have all of these official events under my belt, I can have one of those runners Twitter or X or whatever that app is called now, profile descriptions that shows off my best running times. You know the profile that all runners have. I wanted one of them. To put it into context, I have a fitness philosophy that occasionally I should do something that removes me from my comfort zone, which forces me to adapt and overcome. Do things that puts me under some form of healthy pressure. Events or races that scare me. Without the risk of failure, there is no challenge. Oh. Well done, my love. Well Thank done. you. I'll give you a medal. Thank you. Well done. Oh, you have no idea I'm pleased to be here. <laughs> Cute. So it needs to be something which is hard, and if I don't do it properly or don't train for it properly, I have a real risk of it going wrong. I work well under pressure and having these really challenging targets help me focus my training and motivate me to get it done every single day. These events all had a real chance of failure and most importantly to me, they all had everyone around me, except my partner and my children, so my friends and extended family telling me that I won't complete them. This kind of negative energy ironically gave me a push on. I even started one of my own videos with a quote, doubt is not the enemy. The best thing you can do to motivate me is tell me I can't do something. My name is Ryan. I knew I had to prove these people around me wrong. To be fair on them, when I first entered into these events, I was not known for my exercise regime. I was known for my love of fast food and booze. I entered into the Royal Parks half for fun for the buzz of an organized event and to set myself a half marathon PB that I could work on moving forward, which is why not being able to complete it was even more annoying. Then last week, one day before the half marathon, I go to the gym as normal, complete my workout and for fun, maybe because I was bored, maybe because I'm a complete plonker, I get on the generic exercise bike and instead of just having a slow cool down ride, I decide to see how hard I can go in a sprint. What a plonker, what a plonker. <laughs> You see, my Watt Bike Smart Bike stops the resistance when you stop pedaling. These cheap in-house bikes do not. So when you push hard, the resistance doesn't stop when you do. So I dropped a load of watts into the bike, I sprinted really hard, and immediately wanted to stop. The pedals kept going, stretching my foot to overextend, and I managed to get my left foot out, but my right foot got, got caught and it kept going. I've managed to train and run for all these other scary events without incident or injury. I sign up for my first official half marathon race and injure myself messing about in the gym the day before. Now there is a lesson here, I think it's don't go to the gym. I don't know what the lesson is, except don't sprint on a generic gym exercise bike, they're not made for that purpose. Good news is when I went to A&E, no bones were broken and it's just a ligament strain and it was completely avoidable, it was completely my own fault. I apologised for wasting their time, promised to return the crutches they gave me, and I left limping with my towel between my legs. The triage nurse did say that I should be able to use my foot again within two weeks. Not listening. Not listening. And I should be out training again by the end of next week. So, to make up for missing my first half marathon race, wasting everyone's time, including the nurses and my partners, and for allowing those family and friends around me to know that I am human, I've signed up for the Battersea Park Marathon in two weeks. So the Battersea Park Marathon is 10 laps around Battersea Park in London, and that distance completes the official marathon distance. This will be the first time I will be running an official marathon distance since I ran the London Marathon. Joking aside, the foot is feeling a lot better now. I have several stretching techniques I've been using to strengthen it. I'll keep doing that and I'll be back out running on it next week, just in time to run 42K or 26.2 miles next weekend. 
I don't think I'll be setting any major PBs for myself, but who knows. Thanks for watching my update. Instead of having a fun video about my half marathon jaunt around London that I was really looking forward to making, you have this rambling video conveying my frustration and annoyance at a self-inflicted injury. What do they say? If you fall off a horse, you should recognise that we live in the 21st century and we have cars. See you in my next video. Thanks for watching. And I completely understand if you don't want to subscribe to my channel on the back of this video. I wouldn't either if this was the first time I was watching one of my videos. However, if you're not new to my channel, please don't unsubscribe. I've got the Battersea Park Marathon video coming in less than two weeks on the back of an injury, so that should be fun. And maybe, just maybe, my attempt at the hardest challenge on Zwift. In the video value of overcoming a hard challenge, I did say that overcoming a hard challenge can be in any form not necessarily a 100K run. Now, two weeks later, that challenge is getting back into my fitness routine after being completely derailed. I was completely kiboshed. If you're on a fitness or a weight loss plan, then you will face this challenge more than you will anything else. Being derailed for whatever reason and then having to get back on it again. I know that with the exception of a serious injury, even minor niggles, bad days or weeks at work, not having enough time or any of the other excuses we use to rationalise why we still haven't reached any of our goals are exactly that, excuses that we believe. As humans, we find it easy to believe our own BS and having self-awareness is knowing when we're BSing ourselves. I will not create a training plan that focuses more on rest than pushing myself. I spent 25 years resting. I now want to push myself. If you start with what you can't do rather than what you can, then you've already failed before you started. I find it more reckless to allow my derailed plan to continue one day longer than is needed. I feel my foot has recovered enough to allow me to run this distance. And I know that when I'm done, I'll be tired, I'll be stiff, and my recovery would have been affected by the fact that I haven't trained for the last two weeks. But I would have achieved something I wouldn't have done if I hadn't have listened to my internal voice. I would have overcome a hard challenge. Probably the hardest challenge anyone wanting to make changes to their life, lose weight and get fit. Not listening to the doubters around them and more importantly, not listening to the doubts in their own head. There's absolutely nothing wrong listening to your own body. If you don't feel up to it, then absolutely take a rest day. But my point is, if you have more rest days than you do pushing days, then you know what are we doing? Thanks for watching and listening to this video. Out of interest, is this sort of video something you like? It's quite a raw and honest video, but is it something you'd like to see more of? If it is, let me know in the comments below. If it's not, then maybe skip this one and move on to my next ridiculous challenge. As promised, here is a small challenge I achieved three weeks ago on Zwift. It was something which is part of a bigger video, but I thought I'd throw it into this one. About six weeks ago, I attempted to achieve the rocket badge on Zwift. The rocket badge is reaching 100K per hour on the bike. And without Googling how to do it, I knew to reach 100K per hour, I would have to do it downhill. So at the end of my outdoor Zwift attempt, I tried it downhill from there and I couldn't do it. I got nowhere near. I was too exhausted and it transpires that Alpha Zwift isn't steep enough. I didn't know this. So my next attempt was part of my four horseman route completion attempt. This will be a future video. I also Googled the best way to get this 100K per hour achievement and Google said to do it downhill from the radio tower. And that's exactly what I did. This is a monster climb. Monster. So when I get to the top, I'm going to attempt the 100k descent. I'm going to try and reach 100 kilometers an hour. I have absolutely no idea how to do it. I'm just assuming raw power and then deploy the aero. Right, okay, we're going to do this. We're going to start going down now and we're going to blitz this 100k. Let's do this. I'll be so good, I'll be so happy if I did this. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, yes, yes, yes. A 
100 kilometers an hour. Woo. Thanks for watching this video. Please don't forget to subscribe and see you in next week's video where normal service will resume. Also, if you've made it this far, 65% of my viewers don't subscribe. So thank you very much to the 35% that do subscribe. But if you're one of the 65, please hit the subscribe button. It really helps me out. Thanks very much. See you in the next video. I'm not gonna put my running times on Twitter or X or whatever the hell it's called. Times don't matter. All that matters is overcoming a bloody hard challenge.